Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, I'm talking about the new 5K iMac. Now, it's not the one that was released last year that I compared to my Mac Pro at the time. It's a brand new one that was released two days ago. There's uh, multiple different updates, and I was really excited to see how it performs in video editing. The last version did a great job, and when I compared it to my Mac Pro, that cost almost twice the price. It beat it out in a lot of tests, so I was very impressed with it. One issue it did have is it got quite a bit hot, and it actually slowed down the CPU and the GPU. CPU if you're running either one at 100% for an extended period of time. So that held some people back from purchasing the computer. I did a separate video on the heat of both computers, testing them and comparing them. You guys could check that out right here. One hint this one does a good job. So if you guys want to see that, make sure you watch that video. But this one's going to be focused specifically on video editing. So what's new with the computer? The display is still a 5K display, we don't need anything higher resolution than that, but they did increase the colors. It's now over 100% sRGB, so if you're a video editor, you're doing color correction, or you're a photo editor, this is going to be awesome for you because the panel is so accurate. Now the next thing is they updated the SSD, now it's two and a half times as fast, so it's very, very fast, um, ridiculously fast you could say. Uh, the next thing they updated is it now has an updated graphics card. Now this is probably the same as that graphics card, but just with a newer firmware. It's an M395X. That's the one I recommend you buy if you're buying one of these computers. It's the 4 gigabyte model, so keep that in mind. Now the processor is the biggest update. It's using the newest generation Intel Skylake, so it's more efficient, it's more powerful, and it also supports up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now, Apple does not tell you that you can get 64 gigabytes of RAM in it. If you buy it from their site, you can get 32 gigabytes. But there is newer RAM that you can buy that is uh, 16 gigabytes per chip, and that will give you 64 gigs. Now, the 2014 model cannot do that. You have to have this newer CPU, so the 2015 version. Now, many people think that you have to get the RAM from Apple or else you're gonna avoid your warranty, it's hard to install, stuff like that. None of it is true. You guys could see how easy it is to install this RAM. Literally, you take off the little cover in the back, pull over some tabs, pop out the RAM, and put it right back in. Very easy, takes about two minutes of your time. I always suggest buying RAM separately instead of getting it pre-installed. If you want to get 64 gigs of RAM, that's your only option. And if you want to save a lot of money, you just buy the RAM yourself. Apple charges you 600 bucks to go from 8 gig to 32 gig. You can get 32 gigs of RAM for under $200 and install it yourself in about two minutes. It's not gonna void your warranty. And you could sell the eight gig that comes with the base model or just keep it for backup. So you're gonna save a lot of money. And I definitely suggest doing that. I'm gonna have a link in the video description for the RAM that I suggest. It's gonna work great in your computer, saving you a lot of money. To start off, we're gonna be looking at some benchmarks. Couple CPU benchmarks and then a GPU benchmark. Looking at Geekbench 3, you see that the single score is just a bit higher than the older model, but the new 2015 iMac is quite a bit faster, almost a thousand points more on multi-core. So there's definitely an improvement there. Looking at Cinebench R15, which is a video editing 3D benchmark, you see that it gets quite a bit better CPU score, and the GPU score is also slightly improved. Taking a look at Unigen Heaven, which is a graphics benchmarking software, you'll see that the new iMac is just slightly faster than the older version. But some interesting things to note is the RPM on the fan is sitting at idle at the end of the test. The CPU is 12 degrees cooler and the GPU is 10 degrees cooler. I'm very happy that the graphics card is running cooler. If you wanna see more detailed results, check out my overheating comparison. I run this test multiple times to see the temperatures for extended use, and I also set manual fan speeds to see what temps I get. So definitely check out that video if you're gonna be pushing the graphics card to 100% for an extended period of time. Starting off with video editing, looking at a five minute 1080p clip, you'll see in Premiere Pro, we're getting about a 50% increase in speeds that is definitely impressive now on the final cut x side you see it's slightly faster but not as much of a difference adding two luts and film grain to the clip you'll see we're still seeing an improvement in premiere pro but interestingly enough in final cut it's actually slightly slower Switching over to a 5 minute 4K clip without effects, we see an improvement in both Premiere Pro and Final Cut. 
adding two LUTs in film grain to the same clip, we're seeing about a 36% improvement in speeds in Premiere Pro. Once again, interestingly enough, if we're looking at Final Cut, the results are actually slower. This next test has four 4K clips scaled into a 4K timeline with two LUTs and film grain applied to each clip. It's 30 seconds long, but it's a really, really hard render for a computer to do. Looking at Premiere Pro, we see almost a twice as fast difference. So that is very, very impressive. Final Cut, you see it's quite a bit slower. Once again, we're getting slower results with a new iMac. So why are we getting such an improvement in Premiere Pro, but actually slow results in some of the tests in Final Cut? Well, Apple ships this computer with the latest operating system that they offer, and Final Cut has not yet been updated to fix a couple of the bugs that we're seeing in Final Cut. So my guess is once they update Final Cut, we're gonna have better results, and we should see improvements in Final Cut compared to the older version as well. Looking at the improvements in Premiere, and also looking at the improvements in the benchmarks, it would just make sense that it's gonna run faster faster. This next test takes a 15 second 4K clip and applies an image stabilization filter to it. You see we're getting about a 15% improvement in Premiere Pro and about a 25% improvement in Final Cut. Now you probably noticed that even though the new iMac got slower using Final Cut, the results are still faster than the Premiere Pro results. Now that's also because Final Cut really harnesses that graphics card power to do the rendering compared to Premiere Pro, which relies more on the CPU. So you guys could tell here, we're getting a lot more graphics card usage out of the Final Cut software compared to Premiere Pro. So Premiere Pro definitely has some way to go to get some more optimization to fully utilize graphics cards. Now some people may say that it's probably just because it's an AMD card. I've done extensive testing with both AMD uh, and NVIDIA cards using both CUDA, OpenCL, uh, different cards ranging from $150 all the way up to $600. And this is something that really stays the same uh, in Premiere Pro. They're still not harnessing that graphics power. So I'd love to see Premiere do an update um, and really take full advantage of the resources that it has available from these modern computers. If you have the 2014 version, should you upgrade to the 2015? And if you're looking at getting one of these iMacs, which one should you get? Now to start off, if you're running Premiere Pro on a late 2014 5K iMac, I would say definitely upgrade to the newer one. Apple has good resale value, so you can sell it for maybe a two, $300 loss, take a little bit of time and get the newer version. Well, I have a link in the video description to the exact model that's right behind me. And that's the one I recommend for most people if you're doing any kind of editing, video, photo, any type of productivity, uh, that's the one you wanna get there. Now, a lot of people ask me, should I get the Fusion Drive? I get a lot more storage compared to SSD and it's cheaper. I always say no, don't go for it. A Fusion Drive is basically a standard slow drive with a little bit of flash storage on there. Now that flash storage runs out really quick, so you're not gonna get all your programs on there. The other thing is it runs a lot slower than the SSD that's inside uh, the models that I linked to where it's, it's just completely an SSD in there. It's about three times slower. Uh, instead, I would suggest getting a 250 gigabyte SSD, that's the one I have behind me, and then spend $130 and get a five terabyte external hard drive. You're gonna have a lower price and you're gonna have a lot of storage and you're gonna have speed. So you get the best out of three instead of going for a three terabyte fusion drive. You'll also see that the iMac I linked to has eight gigs of RAM. Like I mentioned before, that's the version I recommend. Buy the RAM that I have linked in the video description. You're gonna save uh, between four to $500 and you're gonna get just a lot more bang for your buck. Most people don't need 64 gigabytes of RAM, but if you're one of the people that does, you're definitely gonna need this one because the older one does not support it. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, you guys can ask in the comments section below. Don't forget to check out the overheating comparison test where I go into detail about the heat of both the graphics card and the CPU of the, both the systems and how they compare. And if you guys are interested in more videos like this one, definitely hit that subscribe button uh, for future videos that you're gonna like. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.